Hello, welcome to this video. We are going to look at electrolysis of copper two sulfate solution using copper electrodes. In our previous video, we are using graphite as our electrode, but in this case, we want to use copper and see what, what is the difference when we try to switch the nature of the electrodes. Remember, nature of electrodes is one of the factors that can determine the products that we can produce whenever we are carrying out electrolysis. So during the first version where we used graphite, we are seeing products being formed as oxygen and copper being formed. But in this case, we want to see what actually happens when you use copper electrodes in copper to sulfate solution. So when you look at our setup, it is the same, just that in this case, we are going to be using our copper electrodes instead of graphite stroke carbon electrodes. Remember when you use graphite or platinum, it's because these, are, these electrodes are inert, but in this case, copper electrodes, they are not that inert, and we may see them participating in our electrolysis. So we have our positive terminal, this side, and our negative terminal. Remember the shorter stripe is the negative electrode. So when we close our switch, that means the electrode that is connected to the negative terminal will become our cathode. So here we have our cathode, while this other now will become our anode connected to the positive terminal. And that means it will be relatively positive compared to this other one. This one will have more of the electrons. So it will be negatively charged. But remember, we still have copper to sulfate solution. That means the ions present in the solution here must come from this substance. So we have our copper to ions present in solution together with our sulfate ions present. But because this is water, or we have said this solution, we shall have our hydrogen ions from the water together with our hydroxide ions from the water. So remember it's the copper two ions that make the copper two sulfate solution to appear blue. So what actually happens? When we close our switch, we shall induce opposite charges to attract. And in this case, it's the ions in this solution that will always be moving. So the copper two ions, which are positively charged, will have to move or migrate towards the cathode together with the hydrogen ions. So that means at our cathode, we shall have hydrogen ions together with copper two ions migrating to our cathode. But like we had seen in our previous video, we know that it's the copper two ions which will be preferred in terms of discharge. So that means the hydrogen ions will not be discharged. So it's the copper two ions which lack two electrons once they reach this electron-rich electrode, they will pick two electrons. So this is aqueous, they will pick two electrons and then they will become copper atoms. So that's the reaction that is taking place at our cathode. And in this case, this is a reduction reaction. We shall not go so much in details. However, when you look at our anode, now when you look at the anode, which ions will go to the anode? Obviously, the negatively charged ions. We have the hydroxide ions. These ones are the ones which we are discharged when we are using graphite as our electrode, together with the sulfate ions. But not to forget our copper atoms because we are dealing with the copper electrodes, so obviously copper atoms may also participate in our oxidation. So an anode, this is basically the electrode where oxidation takes place. And oxidation in this case, in terms of electrons, oxidation is loss. Oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons. So loss of electrons is oxidation. So among these three species, we have the hydroxide, the sulfate, and the copper atoms. It is the copper atoms that will be preferred in terms of oxidation. So we shall see the copper atoms 
That is to say our copper electrode. You shall see the copper atoms losing four electrons and then going into solution. So this is kind of the reverse of the first equation occurring here at our cathode. So shall form this. However, because we don't prefer subtracting electrons, we shall rewrite this, the preferred version, we shall have our copper two atom losing two electrons to form copper two ions plus our two electrons. So this is the second equation occurring at our anode, and this is the first equation occurring at our cathode. So as the copper two ions are being removed to form copper at our cathode, other copper two ions are going into solution in the deep process. So still the movement of electrons will continue in this direction from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Electrons will continue to flow with the aid of these ions moving from one place to, to another. So let us see what actually happens if at all we are carrying out purification of copper. So in this case, the solution obviously will remain blue. Unlike in our first version where we used graphite as the electrode, the solution turned colorless with time. So in this case, it remains blue because as the copper two ions responsible for the blue color are being removed at the cathode, they are also being substituted back. So the tension is kind of maintained and the solution will have the same concentration of copper two ions. So the concentration of copper two ions remains constant. However, we usually see some kind of different appearance if at all we are carrying out purification of copper. So this method helps us to obtain almost a very high percentage of purity close to 100%. So in this case, what we normally do, we put the impure copper to be the anode or the positive terminal, and then the pure copper to be the cathode. So obviously because like we have seen in our previous slide or page, we have seen that at the cathode, copper is being formed while at the anode, copper is dissolving into our solution. So usually we can get maybe an O of copper, O of copper and then place it at our anode. So when we close the switch, the same process will take place the copper that is at our anode will obviously dissolve into solution. And then the solution itself, as the copper migrates to the cathode, it will then be formed at the cathode. So with time, we shall see a buildup of copper at our cathode. While the strip or the impure copper, we shall see it kind of dissolving and reducing in size at our anode. So what we shall basically see here, we shall see some impurities being formed at the bottom here. Because as our impure copper, the copper part of the impure copper dissolves while the impurities may drop obviously due to, to gravity. So this is the same way we can purify copper by applying electrolysis. It can also be used in coating. You just have to put here whatever substance you want to coat as your cathode and then carry out the process. With time, you will see that a layer of copper will be formed at your given substance you want to coat. So that's all about electrolysis of copper to sulfate solution using copper electrodes. So in this case, no oxygen is formed, but we are seeing copper electrodes participating in the reaction. Feel free to let me know about the video, any comments, don't forget to subscribe so that whenever I upload new content, you're among the first to get notified. Thanks for watching, be safe.